No, this isn't technically part of the problem because we are just talking about the characteristics of the graphs. But I just want to keep on putting this thought in your head. Uh, there are two imaginary solutions to this equation. Or if this were an equation, there would be two imaginary solutions. Okay, we got two x-intercepts. We were expecting four, so that means we have two imaginary that are out there floating around somewhere that we would have to use some other method to figure those out. And we'll talk about that later. Okay, let's talk about the extrema. Let's look at it. We have a maximum, a minimum, and a maximum. Now, it's kind of hard to see the difference between that maximum and minimum right there. They're really close. So I'm, I'm going to adjust my window so that I can see things a little bit better. Okay. Now, I'm not just going to zoom in because I'm going to lose part of my graph if I do that. So let's be strategic. I really don't need all these y values below the x-axis because uh, nothing's going on down there. My function's just decreasing. So I'm going to cut those off and then really my uh, graph is concentrated there around the origin. So I'm also going to reduce the width of my y's or my x's. So I'm going to go my window. I'm going to change my x minimum to negative 5 and my x maximum to positive 5. So that's shrinking it horizontally. And then as I said, I really don't need that stuff below the x-axis, so I'm going to make my y minimum like negative 2. I do still want to be able to see the x-axis, but I really don't need all that detail. And I didn't mess with the y maximum, okay? And then I graphed it. So now I can see a little bit more clearly this maximum and this minimum. Technically, I could zoom in a little bit more if I wanted a little bit more distinguishment, but that it's better than it was, okay? So I have two maxes and I have one min. So second trace, maximum, like I said, I like to start on the left side of things, so I'm going to do the maximum first, okay? Move it to the left side, move it to the right side, press enter. My maximum here is at negative 1, positive 2. Then we've got a minimum, so second trace, minimum. I'm right where I need to be, really, for my left bound. I'm going to scoot it over just a little bit, but I really don't have to. Right bound, enter. I have a minimum at negative, don't lose that negative right there, sometimes they're hard to see, 0 0.3661, 0.652. And then I got one more extrema. I got a maximum over here. So second trace, maximum. Move my cursor, move my cursor. 1.3666.848. Oops. Anyway. Okay, two maximums, one minimum. Now, after I talk about my extrema, I like to go ahead and do my range because I'm, I was just looking at maximum and minimum values, so it's kind of natural to identify my range at this point. So looking at this graph, this, this last maximum that I found, we actually call that an absolute maximum. The other one is just a relative maximum. This one is an absolute because that is the very highest y value that my function is going to achieve. Okay, the graph never goes above that point. There will never be a y value as an output of this function that is bigger than 6.848. So that means my range is y, it's always talking about your y values, is less than or equal to, because all my y values are below that maximum y value, 6.848. Okay, almost done. We're going to talk about our end behavior and then our intervals, and we'll be done. End behavior. Now, I'm looking at the graph, but technically I'm supposed to be able to do this without the calculator. So I always do as my x values are approaching negative infinity. Okay, that's my left side. My y values are also approaching negative infinity because there was a negative leading coefficient, so this even function is opening downward. My y values on the ends are going down. So on the right side, as 
x goes to positive infinity, the right side of my function, my y values are still going down to negative infinity. Okay, that's how I want you to write it. If you need to, if you need to first say that um, the left side falls and the right side falls, that's fine, but you got to write it with the infinities. Okay, you got to write it with the infinities. So if you need to write that down first and then translate back to mathematical symbols, that's fine, um, but I do need you to write it with the infinities. Okay? And if that doesn't make sense, I can I can come in here in a minute and try and explain that to you individually. Um, sometimes it's better if I'm pointing at a picture right in front of me. Okay, the last thing we gotta do is we gotta do our intervals of increasing and our intervals of decreasing. Okay, so I always go left to right. Okay, that's how I always start this. So I always know I'm gonna start with negative infinity, okay? Um, and this function, number five, the very left side of it is increasing first. So from negative infinity until I get to that first maximum. Again, remember I'm using the x value. So until I get to negative one, my function's increasing. Then it decreases for a very brief amount of time from negative one to negative 0.366, the x coordinate of that minimum. Then it starts increasing again from the x coordinate of that minimum to the x coordinate of my maximum at 1.366. And then it finishes by decreasing for the rest of its domain from 1.366, the x coordinate of that maximum, to infinity. This function is continuing to decrease. Now, this is what tends to throw people off. Is because here at the end, the y values are going towards negative infinity. But again, you've got to remember, we're talking about the x values to identify where it's happening. Where it's happening is the x values. The y values themselves are decreasing. They are headed towards negative infinity on this interval. But we're using the x values to tell us where. Okay. Now, 